Hi everyone, it's Aaron again, and today we're going to be looking at how to make a signal generator out of an I squared C DAC and a parallela. Let's get started. You will need the following materials for this project. A parallel that's already set up. Don't worry about having an HDMI uh, monitor or keyboard and mouse because we're just going to be SSHing into it. You'll also need a porcupine breakout board, a breadboard, an uh, electrolytic capacitor of several microfarads. We'll use it as a coupling capacitor. Uh, LED, and most importantly, an I squared C DAC. I'll link the specific one I'm using in the description. You should probably also have a speaker if you'd like to hear what the waveform we're making sounds like. A probably a few jumper cables, breadboard jumpers, and some alligator clips. All right, let's get started. So just like our previous video with the SPI digital pot, our I squared C DAC has a PMOD connector. But unlike last time, we're not going to be connecting this into the PMOD connector. And the reason for that is, in the last video where we used a SPI digital pot, we were using a BitBang library to write to the SPI digital pot. But since we're trying to generate a signal, we're going to have to write, be writing to this DAC really fast. And we can't use some BitBang library because that would be too slow. And this PMOD connector right here is only just standard GPIO pins. So anything, any sort of protocol we try and implement on it has to be done in software. Instead, we're going to be using the hardware I squared C pins on the parallela. So the hardware I squared C connectors are right here. We have SD, SC, and ground. So SD is data and SC is clock for I squared C. This directly connects to a chip that's implemented in hardware to communicate with I squared C devices and this is magnitudes of times faster than some software library that tries and emulates uh, the I squared C protocol with standard GPIO pins like we were doing with the SPI digital pot in my previous video. With this in mind let's see how to properly wire up our DAC to the I squared C port pin on the parallel I squared C pins on the parallel. So according to the data sheet Pin 6 on connector J1 goes to power. So this is connector J1 right here, and this is pin 6. So let's connect that to the red wire we just hooked up to the porcupine board, which is connected to 5 volts. Right next to the red wire is pin 5, which according to the data sheet goes to ground. So let's hook that to the black wire we connected to ground. And then pin 4 is I squared C data. So if you remember, I squared C data was this brown wire here. So we'll connect that to pin 4 on J1. And pin 3 on connector J1 is clock. So we'll connect that to the white wire, which is clock on the porcupine board. Okay, we have all our necessary I squared C and power connections made. Let's keep going. So we already hooked up all the necessary I squared C connections, but we still have a few more pins we need to connect. One of which is the analog reference voltage for the DAC. So in this example, I'm just going to be using 5 volts for the reference because we're inputting 5 volts into the DAC, so it's uh, easily accessible and we won't need to input any so sort of external voltage. So we remember this pin right here, this red one is 5 volts. That pin's also electrically not electrically tied to pin 1 on connector J3 according to the data sheet which is this first pin right here. So this pin will also is connected to here. So we'll get 5 volts out on this wire right here. So let's connect this to the analog reference pin which is according to the data sheet pin 13 on connector J3 which is right here. So now our DAC will spit out a voltage anywhere between 0 and 5 volts. Since this is a 12-bit DAC, if you were to write all 1s, we get 5 volts on our output. If we were to write all zeros for those 12 bits, we get 0 volts. Uh, if we were to use, let's say, a 2-volt reference, so if I put 2 volts on this pin instead of 5 volts, writing all 1s for that 12-bit value, it would spit out, the DAC would spit out 2 volts. And once again, if we were to write all zeros, it would still spit out 0 volts. So anything for those 12 bits, anything but uh, any combination between all zeros and all ones, the voltage on the output will get scaled between zero and whatever our analog reference voltage is. All right, so a couple more pins we still need to hook up. First, 
Let's get a ground pin so that we can connect to our breadboard. Ground also happens to be pin 14, which is right here. This is just so we can connect ground to our breadboard or oscilloscope. Also, we need to get the output of our DAC. This is actually a uh, octa channel DAC, so it has eight DACs built in, and we're only going to be using channel zero, which is pin 12. So let's get that wired up as well. Pin 12 on connector J3 is right here. Alright, so this output, this green wire is our output, and this blue wire is ground. So I just connected the porcupine board with the wires on it to the back of the parallela. And if you remember, this is the output. The blue wire and the green wire is the output from our DAC. Blue wire being ground and the green wire being the signal. So I'm going to connect the blue wire to our negative rail and the green wire to our positive rail. And for a test, let's just start with uh, an LED just to make sure everything's working. So the long pin on our LED is going to go to the uh, positive side. But f I probably should have mentioned this, but we're going to want to use a 200 ohm resistor or so just to protect the LED from too much current. So, small end goes to ground, long end goes through a resistor to our positive or to our output from our DAC. So, I'm going to connect the long end to the green wire through a resistor. And the short end is going to go through a small jumper to ground. Okay, that should be all we need. Let's go and start programming it. Okay, so first head on over to the Parallel Examples GitHub repository and download it. I already downloaded it. It's right here. And this time we're interested in DAC.WaveGen. DAC-WaveGen. So we need to copy that over to our Parallela. So let's get a new terminal up. Uh, by now I'm sure you know how to do this, but let's ping naro nano to find the IP address, 192.168.1.19. So let's SCP this file over, and we'll just save it to slash, what is this, slash home, slash, should be slash home, slash Lenaro slash desktop. I think this should work. Oh, we still need to do uh, Naro at 192.168.1.19 colon. Okay, that should copy it over. Password's Lenaro. And it's copied over to the desktop. So let's now SSH into it. narrow again all right CD desktop LS all right so there it is now to compile this I actually put the code right here okay this is what we're gonna need Let's compile it. And let's make sure it works. All right, and there it is. So to run it, we're going to have to use sudo dac dash wavegen. And let's go look in, over and make sure it's working. Oh, first we have to select what waveform you want. So in this program, I let you uh, choose two different waveforms. Let's do a nice sine wave, enter steps per quarter period. So my program, it doesn't call any delays. Instead, you change the frequency by adjusting how accurate you want the sine wave to be, or how accurate you want the wave to be. If you want more steps, then enter a bigger number, but they will decrease the frequency. If you want the frequency to be higher, decrease the number of steps it will be less perfect of a sine wave but it will be at a higher frequency so let's just say 10 to get started and it should be working sure enough looks like it's working our LEDs lit 
Uh, the sine wave is so fast you can't see the LED flashing, but it's actually flashing probably several hundred times a second. Let's hook it up to the speaker instead so we can see uh, here the waveform that we're generating. Okay, instead of using an LED this time, we're going to have to hook up the speaker. But unfortunately, our DAC is producing a sine wave that has a 2.5 volt offset, right? Because we have a 5 volt reference, the sine wave is varying between 0 and 5 volts. The center of the sine wave is at 2.5 volts. We can't feed that into a into headphones or speakers without burning them out because they can't tolerate any sort of DC voltage. So this is where our capacitor comes in. This capa this coupling we're going to use this as a coupling capacitor which will remove any of the DC offset and will allow us to feed our signal into the speakers. So to do that, let's pull out the LED and the resistor we were using. And now, cl uh, connect the long pin to the signal output of our DAC. Alright, and hooking this up in series with our speaker, we're going to take the negative end of the of the capacitor and hook that up to our speaker. So to do that, this is where our jumper cable comes in. So I'm going to connect our jumper cable to the point of our speaker terminal, like so. And that's going to connect to the ground side of our electrolytic capacitor. Okay, now we need to hook up ground on our speaker. So this is ground right here. And we have ground on our breadboard right here, so I'll hook that up as well. Alright, ready? Let's see what happens. Now if you listen, you can hear the sound regenerating. Not very loud, this because this is a low impedance load. But you can see we're generating a sound. Alright, let's play with it and see what other sounds we can make. Okay, so let's terminate this program. You can hear the sound. You control C, it'll end the program. Alright, let's see what other parameters we can play with. Let's run it again. This time we'll do a sawtooth. Let's do five steps per quarter period. Alright, sounds a little different. What else can we do? Uh, let's do a sine wave again. Let's do a smaller number, like five. Okay, sounds similar. What else? Uh, let's do a really crude sawtooth. Let's do like two steps per quarter period. Okay, sounds a little different. Okay, this time, let's do a crudest sine wave you can generate, which is just one step per quarter period. This would be more like a modified sine wave, it's called, because it's only going to have four different uh, steps the entire, the entire period. Alright, does this sound familiar to anyone? Perhaps anyone who's musically inclined, does this sound familiar? Alright, let's go investigate this, because I play the violin and this sounds pretty familiar to me. Hmm, let me see if I can figure out why this sounds familiar. Sounds like a perfect D natural to me. Alright, so let's see what some of these waveforms look like that we were just listening to under the scope. So, that D natural I was just, uh, that we figured out this uh, frequency was. Sure enough, if you look, I put on the scope 587, it's uh, 586. So it turns out our D natural is actually 587 hertz. And you can see this crude sine wave is right around 587 hertz. Let's see what it looks like when we uh, increase the steps per period for our sine wave. Okay, I just turn it off. Let's see what 
Uh, let's do two steps per quarter period for our sine wave. Alright, let me increase our spacing a little bit. Alright, looks pretty good. Let's increase it now to, let's say, five steps per quarter period for our sine wave. Okay, sine wave, five steps per quarter period. See how it's starting to look more and more like a sine wave? Alright, let's do ten steps per quarter period for our sine wave. And now, it finally does actually look like a sine wave. But as you can see, the frequency is only at 59 hertz now, so increasing the steps slows down the frequency. Let's just shoot big and go, let's say, 50 steps per quarter period. Alright, that's 50 steps per quarter period. And you see now it's only 11 hertz, but it's almost a perfect, nearly perfect sine wave. Alright, let's look at our uh, sawtooth generator now. So once again, I'm going to do a sawtooth. Let's st start with one step per quarter period. So zoom in. And you see it looks a lot like that modified sine wave we were just uh, hearing. But let's increase it now to three steps per quarter period and see how it looks. Alright, it's starting to look a bit like a sawtooth wave. Let's go to five. And voila, starting to look very toothish, if you ask me. Okay, let's go to ten now. Okay, we got ten there. And once again, you can see how our, how our frequency is going down. It looks like the oscilloscope's having trouble calculating it. Maybe it only works for sine waves. Anyways, let's go big for this one too. 50, 50 steps per quarter period. Okay, and now we got a pretty sine wave at a very low frequency, only 11 hertz. So, this shows you how you can generate different frequency waves using a DAC. Obviously it's low frequency as you increase the steps per quarter period in this program, but uh, does generate a pretty nice, pretty clean wave. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration. Sorry if it was a bit, bit long again. Uh, feel free to play around with my code or I commented it pretty thoroughly so you guys can figure out how it works. I'll link all the stuff I use in the description. Uh, please comment and let me know what you think, what I can improve upon. And, yeah. Alright, thank you.